Hi and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm showing you how to make some easy fence pieces for your terrain and scatter needs. Want to see how it's done? Stay tuned and let's check it out. The first thing you want to do is get a hold of some Dollar Tree foam and you're going to peel off one side. Then taking your wire brush, you're going to pull the brush from top to bottom to start creating a wood grain effect on the exposed side. Peel off the paper from the other side and do the same thing pulling top to bottom. Then what you're going to want to do is take a ruler and you're going to cut strips of this foam making sure to run with the wood grain line that you just created and you're going to cut out these quarter inch strips really depending on how much fence you're going to making is going to depend on how many of these you're going to want to have in the long run then you take the wire brush and you're going to pull some wood grain down on the sides that were just cut away from the foam i lined up a few of these strips together and then i cut them at one inch increments to start creating the fence posts it does help to make sure that you hold these securely together as you're doing this if you're not comfortable doing this then cut them one at a time at one inch increments instead Because the rails are toothpicks, it's actually very easy to do this. You're going to take one side of your foam post and you're going to poke into toothpicks. Then take them out, take another post, and basically insert the toothpick to match up the two holes that you had from the previous post. Then you're going to just make sure that everything fits together nicely. And what you want to do now is move over to a low temp hot glue gun, put a little bit of glue over each of the holes, and insert one side of the toothpick onto one of your posts. Once the glue has hardened enough, you can then shift over to the other post and repeat the process, and this is going to give you a section of fence line when you are done. Should any bits of toothpick be poking out when you are done with this, just take a strong, sharp pair of nippers and clip away the pieces that are sticking out. When it comes to the bases for these fences, you basically take a strip of cereal box cardboard that is an inch wide, then you're gonna cut off strips that are a half inch wide, Cut those in half so you're ending up with squares that are a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch. And when you have enough squares cut, what you're going to do is hot glue these again with your low temp hot glue gun to the bottom portions of the fence. So you're going to put a little bit of hot glue onto each of the bottoms of the posts and then just place one of these squares at the bottom and you will end up with a stable bit of fence line so they don't tip over and fall on you. To create the corner piece, you're going to take one piece of already made fence line and you're going to place toothpicks just underneath the previous rails. Same technique, making sure you poke in holes first. Then you're going to move over to doing the same onto another open post that hasn't been glued up yet. And when you get everything lined up, you're then going to go back to your hot glue gun and make sure everything is secure and in place as you had done before for your original fence line. And also make sure you put on a square base so everything is nice and stable and you get a nice corner piece of fence. To continue the length of fence line, what you can do is put a toothpick either right above the previous rail or below the previous rail. I decided to go above in this case, but it's the same thing as before. Poke in the holes ahead of time, add the hot glue, insert the toothpicks, and then you can do the same onto another post. Just make sure everything is secured with hot glue and you put on a square piece onto the bottom of your post so everything stands upright. However many lengths you want to put together is completely up to you, but this is how you can add on to the line of your fence. To ensure that the fence line pieces actually meet at post, what you're going to want to do is just trim off the length of cardboard that runs along the outer edges of your fence posts. By doing this and trimming it with a nice strong pair of scissors, you can then butt the fence posts up to each other so they meet without gapping. When it comes time to paint the fences, what you're going to do is take a mixture of burnt umber and Mod Podge, two parts burnt umber to one part Mod Podge, and you're going to paint the posts and the rails of the fence, not the bases. I'm going to explain what we're going to do with the bases in just a little bit. But basically get the paint on everywhere. Now for the bases, I actually use the Vallejo textured paint just to kind of give it more of a soil-like texture. Make sure when you're doing this that you get the edges of the cardboard as well. Then we're going to move on to territorial beige once everything is dry and do a dry brush along the posts and the rails of the fence. Again, you're going to leave the square cardboard bases alone with this. So get that color on, let it dry, 
and then you're gonna move on to gray from Craftsmart. Same thing, you're gonna dry brush this on. In terms of coverage, you want this to be about a 30% coverage in this case with this color. It's basically creating a weathered wood effect at this point. Finally, when that's dry, you're gonna take vanilla ice cream and again, another round of dry brush and a little bit more light-handed with this. Focus on your edges of the posts as well as your rails to highlight those details. And this is gonna finish off that weathered wood effect that you will often see on these fences outdoors. Now, when it comes time for the bases, we're gonna take brown oxide and again, we're gonna dry brush this onto the textured paint so it ends up looking like drier soil. Adding plant growth to the bases is completely up to you, but these are the plants that I used. I had the static grass pieces, I had some of the plastic aquarium plants, and I also had this residual moss left over from a previous build. So basically I just took my hot glue gun and added accents of these pieces around the fence post bases. And it just sort of gave it a neat little look. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to, but it does help sort of finish off the look when all is said and done. And here we have our final look after all is said and done. It's a very quick and easy yet effective build. Have fun playing around with this and the different permutations in terms of how long your fence lines are gonna be, how many corner pieces you wanna have. It's basically something you can truly make your own because of the simplicity of this build. If you wanna put in the vegetation, go for it. If you don't want to, then just feel free to leave it out. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, as always, please comment down below or you can contact me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. If you've liked this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and you are welcome to subscribe while you're here. That's it for me for today and I look forward to bringing you another creation soon in the next week. Take care, everyone. A big welcome to Steve, a premier patron on Patreon. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon community. If you too are interested in joining, please make sure you get over to the website link in the description below. I need to change the zoom on my camera because uh, this is from the live stream settings. Tired of lagging. Stop lagging! Ah! I have things to do today, contrary to popular belief, camera yelling at my camera. I am yelling at my camera right now. Because that... That makes sense. Alright. Uh, fence! Take... Take it, take it, take one. And easy fences for your terrain and scat for your terrain and... Come up, come up, come up, come up! That was probably really loud. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm. Uh. I've got like the driest throat right now. What the hell? Or hick. I've got a hick and dry throat. It's affecting how I'm speaking. I think, therefore, I am. Theoretically. Let's see.